everyone this is Kelly and I am here to take a look at a deck I'm very excited about um, I am a big fan of uh, oh my gosh as I blink because I all I can think of is, is Oak Ash and Thorn I'm a big fan of Oak Ash and Thorn which I am I'm three trees tarot um, who has done the first deck they did was Oak Ash and Thorn which I purchased I absolutely love, I think this is the one in the original box that came with the kind of slider sleeve. This deck is one of my, just in terms of like on the table, like you can see, I think. I have a non, one that's not used as, has been used much. Um, oh, don't bang your card, Kelly. Um, but, um, and I almost, uh, at the cabin, and I almost am, like, oh, it feels so weird to shuffle that one because this is like so broken to me. Uh, but again, you can definitely see some discoloration on the side. That is just from me purely using it a ton, which I love. Like, I love to see that. Like, that's a sign of a deck that is well used and well loved. So this deck has done so many um, Wheel of the Year and Year Ahead readings um, since I got have, have got bought it that, you know, this is just like a no-brainer. This gets used so much. So I'm a big fan. I have nothing but, but love for this. So then when she came out with um, her and the artist who's amazing, I'm obsessed. So the creator and Three Trees Tarot is Stephanie Burroughs. Um, the decks are all illustrated by Adam Ohlers, O-E-H-L-E-R-S. If you do not follow them on Instagram, you should, but I love Adam Ohlers artwork and they're in, it's in all of the decks. But I will say that I was a little bit leery of this one because I am very particular about dragons and I thought it would be beautiful and I bought it because I knew it was going to be beautiful, but I did think it would read maybe a little bit sweet, you know what I mean? Because these are sweet dragon images. But I will tell you the Major Arcana is powerful. This doesn't read sweet. It it reads really well. Um, it reads really, um, I wouldn't say neutral, but it reads like any other good tarot deck and it has a lot of umph behind it. It's a, it's quite a powerful reader, um, despite the absolute yes, gorgeous and, and you know, maybe not like Marvel movie style dragon images. Um, it reads really, really well. I have zero disappointment on this. And I really did expect it to be more of my collection, but not really like fit the mark of like a perfect dragon deck, which I don't have yet because it would, they would visually look, well, some of the majors do though. Anyways, I'm super happy with this deck and I also use it for clients. Um, I use it Sometimes for um, Year Head and Wheel of the Year, these are just really good sizes um, for when I have so many cards on the table. Um, so that's why they tend to get used. Plus they're kind of neutral. They feel very Wheel of the Year-y. Um, and so, but I do use these for other things as well, but they've both been used. Love these, no regrets. Purchase them. Um, I think it was last year I was sent um uh a test copy of this uh oracle deck which is the thistle down that test copy i have at the cabin but this is the finished copy of it which has actually not been used as much as my test copy i did i think i ended up corner rounding the test copy um and i just have that up at the cabin um i love this deck again i wasn't entirely sure because sometimes animal decks just missed the mark and, and i'm not sure a hundred percent i and i feel like i have like at least looked at the majority of animal decks and if they're tarot decks they can miss the mark because they're trying too hard to be an animal deck and it's a it's a weird squeeze between the tarot meanings and the animal what i like about oak ash and thorn is that it's not like a separate animal for every card um, it is a tarot deck that is illustrated using animal themes and it functions just as a straight up beautiful tarot deck and that's what i love about that it says look 
my primary function is a tarot deck and I'm using animals to illustrate that. Whereas some animal tarot decks, they really are trying to make an animal oracle deck, but they want to squeeze it into a tarot. Some do it right, like um, uh, Guardians of the Night uh, Tarot by MJ Cullinane. It seems to be um, meant to be a beautiful merging of a tarot deck and an animal oracle deck, and it actually pulls that off, uh, as does the Spirit Keeper. I always get the name of it wrong. It's a very pastel colored um, animal deck by... Um, Oh my goodness. I'll try to I'll try to find it and put it in. Like I never can remember the name of it. I don't use it a lot just because of the coloration, but it is a perfectly balanced in my opinion oracle and uh, tarot deck where you're really getting the benefit of both. Another deck that's not an animal deck but, but pulls that blend of it functions as an oracle deck and it functions as a tarot deck and they don't get in the way of each other is the Witch Sisters Tarot. That does an amazing job of balancing that but a lot of animal decks don't do that. So anyways this so I thought okay it's going to be a, you know I don't know. So animal decks are hit and miss. They can be really beautiful, but it's like, oh, they're just not that readable. They're just like, okay, if I want to pull an animal guardian single card. But this is great. I have used this quite a bit, uh, um, and I actually really like it. I think it's um, really well done. Um, I like the keywords. I like the, again, I have walkthroughs on all these, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but I really like how this is done, and I have continued to use it. That's the point that I want to make. Um, and so, very happy with that. So I have had no uh, negative um, feelings towards, uh, the. I, I love every one of these decks purchased both of these, was sent this for the purpose of review. So um, it's not just because I was sent these. And of course, you love them. They were sent to you. I purchased both of these. So when, I'll be honest, I've been out of the loop. So when Stephanie messaged me and said, hey, I'd like to send you um, um, a copy. And it's just propped in this. It doesn't have a box or anything. This is just a... Um, uh, test copy, right? A test copy of the deck. So you can see that it's not been trimmed on the corners. So, uh, this won't close with it, but it's, I've just been standing it in there um, for the time being. So when she asked me to send her the newest test copy of the deck, if I was interested in it, I was like, oh, yes, 100%, 100%, yes. I truthfully didn't know, I, I didn't realize there was another deck being made. I've just been kind of out of the loop. Let me grab, I want to do... I do want to grab these out. So here are the backs of the decks thus far, which are really gorgeous. Um, have a have a vibe to them, have a feel um, to it. This one to me is stunning, but definitely breaks from more white space um, and. Um, does, let's see if this one sticks with this um, of having, sorry, no borders as well. So it's kind of, the, the these two tarot decks um, have borders on, again, I love them. This is not a complaint. I absolutely love these decks, but they have more white space with the way the backing is and the way that the borders are. This one left some white space on the back, but pulled us that beautiful, and this is just stunning. Like it definitely shows how, you know, not having that border can just really pop. I'm trying to, let's see, I don't wanna, yeah, um, can really pop. And so the backing on this one it's kind of like a merging of two worlds, right? It really has a vibe of the original um, oak, ash, and thorn. But we have the sleeping creature at the center of the thistledown oracle. Um, it just, 
it's beautiful. Um, it's not the, you know following the exact same pattern, which it doesn't need to do, um, but it's kind of merging of the two of the of the two kind of things, which I love. I absolutely love the backing. I think it is gorgeous. Okay, let's put that put that away. Um, all the things that you know, people are like just get to it. No, no, that is not the way. We do things here. <laughs> we do whatever we can to make it long and annoying. No, I'm just teasing. Okay, so that's the backing. Absolutely love it. But then, okay, I have skimmed these. I have not looked at these card by card other than the majors. Um, but what I absolutely, so here we have this little mouse. And it's got the little buttons and it's and mixed into the leaves. And it's got the little key that's right there. Absolutely adorable. Like, look at that mouse. Absolutely adorable. What is even more, and I'm going to give it away from our walking through, and I'm going to kind of zoom back out. But the entire major arcana is this little mouse's journey. This... <laughs> This major, and I don't know how that fills out into the minors. I don't think it's in every single card, although I think that they do show up. But this little mouse and its little journey through the major arcana is just, that's just stunning. Okay. Again, huge fan. If you want a completely unbiased and by that I mean somebody who just could care one way or another this is not it I love Adam's I'm not gonna slaughter his name again I love Mr. Adam's artwork to an nth degree like there's nothing that I don't love about his artwork um, and, and obviously Stephanie has done an amazing job at um, you know pulling to this together and the theme and and all of that that she does in creating um, the deck as well so uh, I'm a huge fan and this major is just pff, chef's kiss as somebody <laughs> somebody I watch on TikTok always says chef's kiss or or what is it? Um, bomb, bomb. <laughs> I'm too old. I'm too old. Um, I know. I feel like things are a little bright here, so let me try to dim it down a little bit. Um, most of, I think, all of her decks come with these cards that have, you know, the the keywords on them. I know they're not. I don't think they're in either one of my tarot decks. I think they're. In, I left it in um, my uh, Oracle deck, but um, they do come with keywords, and then you can get. Uh, generally, I I don't know. Don't don't quote me, but I think you can get a PDF version of all of them, or at least they're on their her website. Um, so those that's pretty typical that she doesn't. They don't do a, a physical guidebook on any of the decks. It's just a thank you card. And then these she uses on the front and the pack when they're shipping to, you know how sometimes that bottom card or that top card can get kind of mangled? This kind of keeps that from happening. So that's what these kind of extra cards. Now, there are some extra cards in here. Let's, let's just read this here. Um, this is more information for me, but I want to make sure that I give that out. Again, this is a prototype, so some of these things can shift, you know, if they're having problems with colors and they want to tweak something. So this is a prototype. Um, this will be available or on April 19th there will be an email out and when to expect pre-orders to open and stuff like that. So if uh, I will put on the below uh, the website um, and so you may if you're interested in this deck when it drops you may want to sign up for the email. Um, obviously she notes that the final version of the deck will have rounded corners, slightly more saturated colors, and then we'll be, of course, in a box as the other decks are. There are 78 cards in here, as well as an alternate lovers and devil cards, um, two double-sided companion reference cards, right? And then two, the two blank cards protect the deck. I don't think I have in this the lovers 
and the devil extra cards i will try to find a link below to an image if there is one so that you can see what those are um, it did say in here that that would be part of the prototype but and unless we see we may find it as we go through the deck i didn't see it on a quick push through um and there are also five extra art cards, but those will only be, and those I did see in here, those will only be in the first printing of the Heartwood. Um, and it does say all those, so I, so maybe we'll see the extra levels. I did look for it and didn't find it, so it just may not be in here. Prototypes are not perfect, and that's fine. Um, and then again, there is an online uh, guidebook, so I want to make sure I hit all of the information. Okay, so let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in here. Oh, again, and again, obviously these are squared. Yours would be rounded off. Um, and I will, after this, um, cut, uh, probably cut the edges. I don't know, I kind of... I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll, sh I'll see how they feel shuffled with the squared off edges and then I'll decide. So again, let me show you the backing. So I think you saw it up close really well. And then here's our fool and there is our mouse and there is our gorgeous, gorgeous um, card. Now, so I'm sure there's, there may be some sort of little story that's involved here um, with the guidebook. I'm, this is just my own first impressions here. So here we again have the fool. Um, I love that there's a little um, uh, firefly um, that is sort of his companion, like the dog would be. And then there's a little flower that you often see the fool holding. So even though obviously this is, doesn't look atypical, I know that most of her, well, I would say both of her other tarot decks are Rider weight. um, based. Now she does go off on her own sometimes with um, the way that she uh, kind of interprets things, which I have always loved when she's done that, but they are pretty much Rider Waite Smith. I thought I read something when I looked at an Instagram with her um, writing the guidebook that this may go a little bit more off the beaten path in terms of Rider Waite Smith, but I I will see we'll just have to see that together. But um, but so sweet, right? Because it doesn't insert or force the Rider Waite Smith imagery. It it feels good, but those things are there. If those touchstones are important to you as an RWS reader, which I'm not. It, but I know them, and so it's nice to be able to touch into those. Um, but they're there if that is important to you. So I love that. Super sweet way to start <laughs> that off, right? Now look at this magician. So now we've got the white rabbit, right? But now it's really focused on the rabbit um, here. Here's our little mouse down here. I love that we still, it's like this is an overgrown stage out in the woods is what it feels like. And now, you know, who is the true magician here, right? Was the magician using the rabbit or was the rabbit using the magician? I don't know, but I love it. Again, pretty standard for the magician. We can see the coin, the cup, um, the sword, and um, you could even say the flower as the wand. I'm guessing that's what that is. Absolutely stunning. I adore this magician card. Um... I, this made me literal. I, I will say, because I don't have a lot of patience, for sure. Um, but generally, like, I was planning on waiting, because she's kind of always wrapped up so pretty and everything. So I was going to, like, open it, you know, at the beginning of the video. But I didn't, I it couldn't wait. I pulled it open. I wanted to look at the majors. And this hit me particularly strongly on the particular day that I picked it up. Um, but I love the chickadee here. Um, love that we still kind of have the scroll symbolism there we still have the pomegranates we still have the moon right so again all of the touchstones for those major things are there but it doesn't feel overly inserted right because um 
again, this kind of looks like a wrap up for like a carrier pigeon or birds of some, you know, when they the message, you know, me taking messages in terms of birds. So it just doesn't feel like super um, forced. I also do like, you know, we have this house in the background. So this isn't like devoid of human touch or human contact. Um, but it still has a sort of rustic feel like was this a little kid's play house in the backyard. Um, you know, here we have the peeling paint and things. So this is, you know, really has a rustic, well-worn feel even to the bits and bobs that are human based right because we definitely can see those there so absolutely stunning look at the empress again we have sort of like this is like a a little cottage out somewhere behind you know you, we all stumble on these where they have you know no longer used and we have you know the broken windows and all the leaves here but it's still you know this this deer has been able to come in with her baby um and um and and use it as shelter but so i i really it has okay this is what it's kind of um giving me right not the same, right? Not the same, but I love the, and now I'm totally blanking on the name of the deck and I cannot see it from here. Um, let me get it because I started. So I love the Hush Tarot. It's a very fey deck. Um, and so I'm not comparing these two in that sense, but this has a very liminal space feel because there is at this juxtaposition of growth and decay, but also there are a lot of old reclaimed objects and things. So you do feel like you're kind of in this liminal space of discarded humanity um, that it's just, it's really powerful. It works very well in liminal space that I think tarot decks inhabit anyways. That feels very fey to me. So this, I'm not saying this is the same, but in the sense that it feels very liminal space between the wild and sort of the natural environment, but it's not like, well, you, it's not, um, clean and useful and um, full full of life. They're taking on other. Um, I don't, I'm not I'm not speaking the words well, but it's it's repurposing of the human environment. But the leaves coming in and the broken windows and those types of things just gives it that sense of liminal space between the wild and the human civilized world that I am liking the vibe of. That's that's what I'm trying to put out in, in the first three cards. Now, do we see, I thought the mouse was in, oh yeah, here he is. I was gonna say, I thought the mouse was, yep, there's the little mouse right there, right? Look at the emperor then. So again, now we've got this, this empty house, right? Clearly the leaves have blown in. Uh, I like the animals, uh, all of the, the ram's head that we see with the emperor is still there. Um, but look at that wolf coming down. Very powerful. But it is like much more of that structured, squared off um, feeling of it that we see with the emperor. Um, so quite beautiful, quite beautiful. Um, Empress and Emperor. And they don't have to be a matching pair. Here we have the Hierophant. Um, and we have sort of what looks like it may be like a church window. Um, it's again broken. We're in that liminal space. And we have like a lunar moth that is uh, holding the key. So again, we still have the important key there, um, kind of passing down the key, the lunar moth, moth is passing it down, which, you know, we have that key on the back side as well of gaining that knowledge and gaining that information. How sweet is that? 
So it's what's interesting to me is so again we have this house here. Now I would have kind of you know read this as this being a house that's full of life, although there's no smoke coming out of the windows just because of the light. But that could literally be because it's daylight because it looks like this mouse has gone into this estate, this old estate, and that's what we're looking at, which is also amazing. <laughs> um, here we have the beautiful lover's card. Now is this, I should know this, is this the lover's, I think it's similar to the, oh of course it's not in, not, not in order. All right, pause, pause, because now I want to know, oh, yep, not, yep, yep, that is the lover's card from the Oak, Ash, and Thorn love that love that <laughs> um and we have the mouse that is seeing it we can see other pictures here so maybe this is like in the in the future or like in an alternate dimension of uh, this is adam oler's house <laughs> or 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 stephanie's house right and um where they have these images up, but these are kind of off into the future. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have to care? Do we have to know? It's, it's a story vibe feel to it. I love it. So, yes, there you go. Um, oh, there is an alternate. Oh, no. Okay. I, did, I missed this entirely. I even looked for them, but I, it was not it was not the best, best time frame. But anyway. So, oh, dear. Okay. Um, I am going to go with this one. This is really sweet, although it's kind of sad um, because it's like he's just looking at his reflection, um, which is a good thing, right? You're being very independent um, uh, in that, but I, I guess I would see that maybe somewhere else. So I'm going to go with this one because I love the touch in to the Oak, Ash, and Thorn, and I just, it, it really follows these very well to me like going up now we're going up the stairs where we have that so i quite like this one and i'm going to keep that one in um i'm going to set that in here for right now so see look i mean i even looked for it and i didn't see it all right moving on here we have the chariot which is again super sweet look at the little mouse here with the, like an old draft horse um, not maybe like the, the quick moving of the chariot, but it is about movement. It's about doing the work. It's about, you know, this, this horse has knows what it's doing and can confidently move forward. Love it. Look at the strength card with the mouse meeting the snake now. Okay, folks, this is where my crazy brain starts to do crazy things, but I do want to point out a couple things let me come back i do like the um let me find it i just saw it i pulled out all the majors because i thought it was interesting oh dang it obviously the lovers we already saw the hermit um i did think it was kind of sweet that we have the firefly um, at the beginning um, uh, of this journey, I just thought it was sweet. It's not really a connection there, but I also liked the um, High Priestess. Both have that same little roll from the first one, so there's a bit of a nod there. We do have a bit of a crown and a bit of a crown. I'm not a big fan of crowns and things on birds, but it's very subtle. I actually didn't notice this till I saw that, so it's not, to me, bothersome. But we do have that same little rolled up thing there, kind of nod. Um, I do love, one of the, my favorite things about um, the Oak, Ash, and Thorn is the fool at the beginning and then the world at the end, which is just one of my absolute favorite favorite um and then and then of course the emperor in the middle um and then the world the world card is just i love this uh th theme that kind of goes through it so i do like that they are still 
kind of here as well. Again, not a direct tie-in, but kind of cool. Um, the other thing is the um, Hierophant. We have the little bird with the hanging key. And so now we have that same hanging key, uh, but the Luna Moth is passing it on. So I love that. Uh, little tie-in and even at the little hanged man is the mouse like this little mouse got some fresh perspective Which maybe is why they're on this journey here. So I thought that was sweet and even the fact that the um, Empress sorry, I know I'm gonna get them all messed up But even the Empress has the bunny in the background uh, here on the wall and we have the Empress Bunny that is here. And you can see it's in a very similar position. Um, so I love that nod as well. So far, those are the nods that I have noticed. Some probably my own and some um, I think are deliberate nods. But I just wanted to point that out. But what I had, the reason that I wanted to look was I thought there was a snake in the strength card. Um, and there is, uh, I just didn't, I just put it back, but there is a strength, there is a snake. It's not like the main, uh, oh my goodness, it's not the main, but see down here we have a snake in the foot of the badger there. But here we have the mouse like coming face to face um, with the snake here. And maybe they're going to have a conversation and work things out and be stronger together. But you can see there's the lemon scot. So again, you can see the basic tie-ins um, that you would often see in the strength. The strength is at 8, not at 11. It's a right weight smith based, so that makes sense. Look at the little hermit. He has literally stepped back into a little nook and cranny where some lost um, sewing things are. Again, remember all of the buttons that we see on the back. He's kind of stepped back to process all the stuff that he's seen so far um, and really start to process that and gain some uh, wisdom right before going back out as well. Absolutely love that. Here we have the Wheel of Fortune with the clock. Um, of course, now I am obsessed with checking. I'm going to have to put these in order if I want to do this. Um, there's the cobwebs that we can see here um, and the owl that we can see in the Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> which I love. Let me pause and put these in order. That's going to be easier. Okay, we should be able to peek at these a little bit better. Here we have Justice, which I really love this Justice. Again, it's going through this whole house. And so we have this um, pile of books and this um, trying to gain clarity. We can see the scales are over here. We have the sword. Again, the normal tie-ins that we would see. Um, the only thing that's similar here, I would say, would be the sword that's in the, old, the Oak, Ash, and Thorn um, uh, card. But super sweet um, justice card there. Now, what's interesting is that the hanged mouse, instead of the hanged man, um, we have uh, the mouse is obviously in the original Oak, Ash, and Thorn and is still in there um, trying to get into the dandelion uh, wine, I would suppose, and is definitely has a fresh perspective and may find themselves in a little bit of a trouble if they don't realize they need to back themselves out. But the mouse is in both of them. Super sweet as the hanged man, but also that nod. Um, here we have our death card, which is actually really beautiful. Um, I know that it's a difficult one, but um, it is really beautiful in the sense of we have that life that is growing out. You know, and if you go into old abandoned houses and certainly into the woods at all, you are going to come across creatures who have died. Um, whether through the natural, you know, they, some of them have very short lifespans um, or through other reasons. Um, and it kind of gets reclaimed back again. This really has that feel 
of that liminal space of the hush tarot and not like pulling back from the fact that the forest there's a lot of death and decay and growth and life in the forest so i think this is really beautifully done although it's really sad with the mouse kind of um snugged up and honoring kind of giving us moment of honoring the passing here we have the temperance card we do have the fast moving water <coughs> um of that but other than that you know we don't uh have much of a tie in other than that moving water uh feel i love that that carved on to the wood is the two cups and the mixing of the cup knowing when to pause um, and knowing when to move forward and actively go um, is a powerful part of the temperance card for me so this is really beautifully done here we have the devil card, which has the two foxes from the devil card, but they're in separate images here. Um, really, really cool. Um, we do have some like red uh, flamed moths that are flying here as well, which we also had in the, uh, in the devil card um, there. And they really are really quite tangled here. So this like not getting too tied up, not getting yourself entrapped in this way um, is of, of sort of a Rider Waite Smith devil card. I think with the reds down the middle and the fines here, it really does give much classic Rider Waite Smith devil card nod to Oak Ash and Thorn. Um, but also, you know, just works very well about of not letting yourself get entangled and taking your power back and disentangling yourself from that energy um, quite well there. So it's quite beautiful. So then here we have the Devil's card, which is really interesting. Um, now, this one should have... Oh, that's the second one. Sorry. So that's our two options. That's the devil card that has like taken poison here, gotten into something that he shouldn't have, I guess. I am 100% keeping this. A, it really goes with this the exp exploration of this house, right? Um, that makes a lot of sense to that. And I, I love the nods to Oak, Ash, and Thorn because I use it all the time. So um, that one uh, will get put away. So next we have the tower card. Again, we have the tree and the lightning and the tree and the lightning striking um, that we had in the original, but he's seeing this off from a distance from the house, which is really, um, again, quite powerful. And I don't at all, again, I love this because I use this deck, but if you didn't use this deck or have the original Oak Ash and Thorn, this is still really powerful, right? We have the lightning striking. We still know that there can be destruction that makes way for clear, new growth um, in the forest. So all of those same things are here. We're just seeing it from a different perspective of this little mouse inside this ho old house. So we have that. Here we have the star card, which is so, 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 so sweet. Um, now this, I wouldn't say there's a nod in here. Um, this is a beautiful star card as well, but I wouldn't say there's a nod in, but it's so sweet. I absolutely love this. Um, it's a little pool of water and it's seeing that reflection that is there and is kind of calling to get your bearings, um, find your, your star um, so that you can keep moving forward. So quite beautiful. Was it rain? Well, it's definitely storming because we have the lightning strike um, following uh, the tower. And now the lightning is struck, the thunder has rolled, the rain has started, but let's just find um, your guidance there. Look at the moon card. Look at the moon card. We have a oh, old shoe, which is kind of funny because the moon for me is about diving into source. And I, in my charm casting sets, I have always liked to have a boot. Um, a, it's about where you're going, but for me, it's an ancestor car. It's an ancestor symbol of kind of kicking, um, 
a kick in the butt to keep moving. Um, and so it's just kind of funny in the moon for you know, pulling from source, which is also going to be from um, our ancestors. So it's, that's just a personal nod. Um, I don't really see a nod from uh, the moon card uh, in the Okash and Thorn. I love this. It's, not, it's like they're up in the attic um, and just kind of hunkered down here. Really beautiful. Look at them, but then you can see, like, look at the difference. You can literally see, right, the darkness and then the light coming in of the moon. And then we have this yellow tones, blue shadow tones, and then the sun really pops there with that yellow tones here. The sun on the T, like, it's a T set with the sun insignia on it. Really, really sweet. Really, really sweet. Absolutely. I love this major kind of it may be up there. It was a big favorite of mine. I do love, you know, if you think of into what is that called into the woods in now and that's I know it's a movie, but there's a deck called into the dark wood. I can't remember. Oh, I'll have to find it. I it's not a deck I use, but it's a deck I keep because I absolutely love the journey of the girl all the way through the major arcana where you're literally seeing right what it would is what the major arcana is supposed to be this whole journey that we're taking through and so we're seeing from the perspective of somebody going through that journey and i i just love it and plus i just love little mice so um again in terms of the sun card i don't really see any connection there um, here we have judgment. This is really powerful, um, especially for the way that I read the judgment card, um, because there is this, I like the shadow realm here and the day, you know, just this line between these two realms here. But the judgment card for me is an assessment card. So we stop. I, there's a there's a card I know there's a deck I love that has um, a man who is looking in uh, the reflection in water right you're stopping and you're reflecting on you know the good and bad choices that got you here good and bad choices other people have made that have gotten you here that you can't take responsibility or or um, you know take it as if it's your own thing either um and sort of assessing all of these things of how you got to where you are um so that then you can learn from that and move forward this is beautiful a meeting in the mirror like this is beautiful in that sense love it and then we have the gorgeous world card i love the little mouse sleeping i love the little firefly friend from of course i've mixed them up now because um, of looking for the things, but the little firefly friend is still there. You know, I haven't really, no, the firefly is not in all of them, but it kind of comes full circle. Um, the little wreath that is on the old door. So this whole major arcana, especially if you keep the, the ones that I've kept in is this journey of this little tiny creature through this enormous house, right? Which would be a major journey that it would go through being how small he is. Now, if you use the other cards, I mean, obviously these are kind of neutral. Um, so this could be in a little overgrown area um, and such, but it doesn't quite feel as much as a journey through the house as the other cards that I picked. Um, but I absolutely love these majors no hands down love the nods to the majors in the oak ash and thorn i'm not going to unless something catches my attention i'm not going to look through the minors of uh, oak ash and thorn for the minors or we will be here all night but if something catches my attention i will definitely note it um, here now before we go on obviously to the minors there are one two three four five uh, art cards that I, I, I'm assuming were probably cards that just weren't used. Like maybe that was going to possibly be a star card, but it, you know, they went with the other one. Um, I love the unease here. That is interesting seeing yourself carved like that. Um, this tend 
Um, this is kind of reminds me of the Hermit card in the Oak, Ash, and Thorn. Um, we have the Surprise again here. And then we have the Sweet Home one with the little dollhouse. Um, I won't mix these cards in. I'm hoping this may say that there's going to be a uh, Oracle deck maybe like... Um, within this little home environment, which I think would be really sweet. But those aren't cards that I would shuffle into the deck itself. So then that brings us to the miners, which I will try to speed up a little bit. I will say just to, let me, let me just, uh, it looks like it continues it. Okay. I was going to say if, if we're leaving sort of the house, um, I did want to retouch on, like it really does have what I love, again, it's not the same. The Hush Tarot is slightly creepy. Um, it's slightly unsettling, um, the Hush Tarot is, which gives it a very fey energy. For me, it's a fey deck. This does not have that, other than the fact that, obviously, when you're looking at sort of um, time, you know, time and space that has been forgotten, a space, you know, once full of love and full of details that is in disrepair, right? So that, that has, you know, that slight, um, nostalgic more so feel and a bit of sadness, right, to this, what was probably a beautiful, vibrant home and family. And so to see it in such disrepair, right, has that little bit of, of, um, shadow but in a in a nice nostalgic way <laughs> versus creepy right that to me it's not creepy um but it still again feels so much like liminal space that I think just works perfectly with a tarot deck in the way that I really love the hush tarot the hush tarot I don't use um a lot for clients I do sometimes with just clients that I know um, we'll we're kind of work with that sort of fey energy, but I don't use it a lot because of that. Whereas this feels like I could use it with those similar vibed readings that I want to touch, tap into, but without maybe the more creepier vibe that not everybody likes to see like broken dolls and creepy doll faces and stuff. So, um, so I, I just, I'm really loving that, the overall feel um, of that liminal space and that juxtaposition between the forest overtaking the civilized spaces. <laughs> um, okay, I promised I would go quicker. So here we have the Ace of Cups. I'm going to keep the Ace out and look at all the Aces. So we're not just sticking with the mouse. And from my quick skim through, the mouse I don't think shows up in I know it doesn't show up in all. I don't know how many, if it's maybe just in the aces. Um, so now we're going to see more forest creatures um, and so forth. Um, I love this two of cups. I love the coming together of the two different color birds. Um, again, we've got a cup or it's a colander. Um, I, I'm not super picky about like they're having to be only cup objects, but we'll see how that goes. Here we have another. So maybe this is all birds. Nope. Okay. Nope. Which I also like, you know, it's not a deck where it's an animal deck where there's a separate animal and everyone, obviously there's mostly mice in the majors. Um, and so, um, you're going to have different animals, but here we have a bird bath. We have the three, um, uh, cups here. Um, we don't see that here, but that's because you do have two cups probably. But again, not super picky, but I love this nod in because we saw that inside of the house on the temperance card. So it just is just beautiful tie-ins to the world that I think is absolutely gorgeous. Four of cups. Um, again, I like this as kind of a step back. Um, I know that in the Rider Waite Smith, it's boredom. Um, I think of it as sort of even keeled emotional space that we should be just sitting there and being calm. And this really works well for me. Um, I don't love Rider Waite Smith, uh, inspired decks that have like a really bored looking person because it doesn't go with the way I read. This is beautiful. It works for Rider Waite Smith, but it also works really well for me, you know what we like <laughs> if it's a deck we're going to use right 
Here we have a five of cups, a very traditional, right? Five broken cups, two cups that are um, upright. I personally think like you could lose those um, direct cup nods, nod ins. Um, she's, I like that we're out in a cemetery. Um, it's very old. You can't even see the writing on the uh, on the stone. So I personally think like this would work beautifully without even having those, but it is nice to have those quick tie-ins to the numbers. And again, a lot of people that do read Rider Waite Smith, it's those, those three broken or fallen over and those two upright are really important in how they might interpret the card. So I think that that's, uh, you know, it's like kind of perfect world tie-ins, but then also the main imagery speaks for itself. Absolutely love the Six of Cups. Look at the frogs um, and the mushrooms that have taken over this house. So you can see the cu cups going up the banister here. Um, but I love this. It looks like a fairy wonderland. Um, so it gives that bit of nostalgia and that bit of magic of the past, um, of childhood and a little, I don't know, nod to Alice in Wonderlandy kind of feel to it. That is quite beautiful and works really well. Here we have the Seven of Cups, so many options. Um, here we do have the mouse. I, ha I guess I should be watching closer for the mouse showing up um, but I think that's the only one that I've seen other than the ace there yeah but we do have like a fox here with the mouse and there's so many options and not to get sidetracked but it's quite beautiful here we have the mouse. I'm kind of on because, you know, this is an interesting one to put the mouse in because this is the journey card. Um, and so it's like kind of re-stopping. You've, you've gotten through one part and now you're about to go on to the next phase of the journey. So I do like the mouse being in that particular card. Absolutely beautiful imagery. See the cups that are here um, all along the way. <clears throat> Here we have the Nine of Cups. Um, I like the coloration. Nine is so full of energy. Um, I like the, um, what are these called? Victro Vict Victrolas? Victrolas? Victro Maybe that's the brand. Victrola might be a brand of these. Um, but these record players with the, this old vintage style record player. Um, I think that's interesting in the wish card. Look at all the cups around the inside. It's interesting in the wish fulfillment, right, kind of card. Because it does hold so much nostalgia. Like you can see in this house that we've been walking through. You know, um, people who, you know, were in love and making a family and putting on the record and playing, you know, and dancing. Like I'm seeing the ghosts of a man and a woman that are dancing um, to this, um, to this uh, song. So the wish fulfillment feels nostalgic because this whole deck feels kind of like that because it is a bygone, it's a, a fresh energy coming into a bygone um, space, um, which is just, I love the, the nostalgic vibe of it. And here's the Ten of Cups with the little ducks. Really sweet. We have the traditional rainbow. Um, we have a lot of like jars and cups along the top. Um, and then we have this um, family here um, of, of ducklings and, and the duck mother. So sweet. Um, which brings us to the Page of Cups. I love the frog and the fish here, although I feel bad for that fish in that little cup. It's not real. It'll be fine. Um, the Knight of Cups is back to the traveling mouse um, with the um, kind of creepy gourd there. <laughs> it feels like it's a little bit, maybe somebody's living in there. And he's going to go up and see, he's, but he's got to actively go up and check that out. Um, there, sweet, sweet queen of cups with the running water and the tenderness and the vulnerability of a deer. 
Um, and then a powerful King of Cups, who's very, a heron being very comfortable in that water space. So that's really beautiful. I love that we see that symbol of the sun that we saw in the teacups. So we just had, and we had those paintings on the wall. So we just see, right, somebody who's very artistic and very crafty um, uh, and, and is just quite beautiful um, across all of the, uh, you know, background images. I think all of those things have that power powerful potential to pop forward, right? When you're in a reading, when something from the background might pop out and connect to other cards. Because if you had, say, the sun card and this come up at the same place and some of those symbols um, can pop in and become part of that sort of scrying aspect of reading, it's going to be quite beautiful, I think. So here we have our Ace of Pentacles, which like our Ace of Cups does have our mouse and has like a door with a symbol in it. Um, so I'm guessing that that's going to go across all the Aces, but we'll keep a watch. So here we have the Two of Pentacles. Absolutely love. Now we're like maybe out in the greenhouse that's in, on the estate um, with the uh, Pentacles here which are quite sweet. And here's our two little pentacles that are on the back of the bigger snail. Here we have the three of pentacles. Um, and we have our pentacles in the spider's um, web here, which is quite interesting. That's just broken glass. I was going to zoom in on that and say, what are those little things on the thing with that is broken glass? But there's our spider's. Um, and they are working together on that uh, on their web, which is again nod to the right of weight Smith three of Pentacles. Here we have our four of Pentacles. Again, uh, four of Pentacles is generally greediness with right of weight Smith. I say it's time to hold to your resources, stable resources. And this frog works well for me because he doesn't look greedy. He's just got his stuff and he's holding on to it. Here we have the Five of Pentacles, which is really quite beautiful. Um, um, the Five is a shakeup in those. Like it feels like the wind is starting. We can see where some things have broken. There has been some discordant energy um, uh, that needs to stabilize in some way. That tree is quite powerful, I think, for a Five of Pentacles, more so than the fox itself. Here we have the Six of Pentacles. Um, the mouse is helping the flowers and then the flowers are growing. So it's a symbiotic, we're going to work together energy um, of the six of pentacles. Here we have a boar in the seven of pentacles, a little piglet, I guess. Like, isn't that like a wild boar? I think that would be a little wild boar piglet. What is in the... Oh, these are little clothes pins because uh, he's underneath. See, that's what's so strange. This is, okay, this is my crazy brain, right? This is what's so interesting about this deck for me. Obviously, it's a sweet deck in terms of the imagery, but this really is giving off like the uh, smoke, ash, and ember where it is deceivingly sweet, but it also has that unsettling because everything is so beautiful and so well loved like what has happened to these people because they p clearly had this like wonderful existence we have somebody who's like p a painter we have all kinds of things going on somebody who loves the sewing we have all these books just piled up and herbs and things and now we've got like a clothes and we've got you know obviously that's the major arcana, we still have pomegranates, which would have been, unless the bird brought them in, that would be rotted, but that would be probably taking the creepiness a little too much. Like what has happened? We have clothes that are still hanging on the line. Like this feels like a sweet reclamation of nature after the apocalypse. <laughs> I'm calling it that Stephanie and Adam um, have created an, a post-apocalyptic, a post-apocalyptic deck where nature is taking back over, and the nostalgia is for the humankind, which have have their time is done. <laughs> that is what the heart song tarot is about. Do not spread that misinformation. But that's where I'm going with this, because it's <laughs> yes, yes. Here we have the eight. 
um, this is like an ink and like a, it's you're kind of using it as a stamp, the squirrel is playing around, but it was, would be like a wax, I would think one of those seals, um, that are there, somebody's feeling something has that sense of authority of the eight. Here we have the nine of pentacles, the sense of abundance, the garden. We normally have the garden here. We have the little mouse and a very comfortable, well-fed rabbit here who is doing well, has the resources to be able to do what they want, which right now is to take a nap and I'm not opposed to that. Here we have the 10 of pentacles. Um, this is an interesting 10 of pentacles. Um, because we have the crows here uh, in the tree. You know, tens of pentacles are generally about um, um, legacy effect, right? Energy that continues to um, move forward and continue. We planted it once and it's now um, continuing to move forward. So I think of it as like the legacy card. Um, now we could see the spotlight on the book itself, like maybe that's the diary of the people that loved the, live there and then their legacy is in that story that nobody's going to read because I don't think there's any humans left. <laughs> We're just gonna, we're just going. I'm telling you, I think this is a post-apocalyptic nature reclaiming civilization deck. Here's our page of pentacles with like a, it looks like maybe that's like a little more like a little mole mouse. I don't think that's the same mouse. I, that little nose looks more like a mole or something, but maybe it's the mouse. I'm not going to judge. Um, uh, with the page of pentacles and the piggy bank is really sweet. Um, here we have the Knight of Pentacles, an old chessboard knight piece I love. Here we have the gorgeous Queen of Pentacles, very much in connection, just feeling the wind and the air and the earth. Love, love, love. And oh, do I love the King of Pentacles. Um, I love the nod to the Taurus here and the, in the potion here. Um, but have you seen, if you go on TikTok, I don't know what the name of this bird is. If somebody knows, tell me, uh, in the comments, but I have seen these birds on, uh, TikTok and they are the most amazing, uh, mimics and singers and just make the most insane sounds. Now, I don't know why we would put this with the King of Pentacles, which is not a very solid feeling. We have the nod to the bull, but it doesn't have like the solidity feeling of the King of Pentacles, who is, you know, completely uh, ruling his boundaries and holding his space and uh, that kind of energy with a bird is not the, the male kings. We just think, I think of birds maybe as king of swords. So I'm not sure like where that would play in with this, but I love it irregardless. And I'm sure something will pop to me later. Um, here we have a, another door with the ace of swords. So, yep, we've got three doors and our mice, our mouse, single mouse showing up for each one of them like this is a cool house like this is a magical house um that is being taken over by the woods like it's in this is it, it's fallen into fey lands and been taking over or again apocalypse who's with me here's the two of swords with um we have the Again, etchings onto the bottoms of like maybe chairs. We have the spider here um, needing to sort of make a decision. It can climb up or it can go forward, but it needs to sort of bring its head and heart together and take a direction. Um, here's the three of swords. Um, this is quite sweet. Obviously it's not being stabbed to death, which I appreciate because I don't read the three. Um, it's about learning. Um, it definitely seems like it's been in a bit of trouble and we hope obviously that it is going to learn from its experience, heal and become even stronger. Again, I'm just, that's how I read threes are about growth. Um, here we have the Four of Swords, absolutely gorgeous. Love all the potion bottles and the hanging. Again, these is a, I would like to live in this house 100%, and I'd like to see this house in its glory. 
Um, here we have the Five of Swords. Uh, shake up. Like these are flight birds. It's raining. The energy is stormy. Um, quite beautiful. It feels like a shake up um, as well. And it looks like maybe even crow um, bones. So, you know, it's kind of like this, this crow has lived and survived, but what's been the cost of that? It's kind of a right away Smith thing. Um, here we have the six of swords, a uh, need to continue and to move forward. I like the uh, swords on the uh, ceiling. Uh, I like the sunshine kind of through there, like keep moving forward. There's something better on the other side of the door that we often see again with Rider Waite Smith, but very different imagery, right? We don't have, um, it's not a boat on the water, although we can see what looks like watery boat imagery on the um, pictures, even with water seeming to be pouring out of that image, which is pretty cool. Here we have the Seven of Swords. There's our little mouse again. Um, what is that down in there? Oh, it's a missing sword. What has happened to this missing sword? Get some more information here. Interesting. What is the story behind the missing sword? Love it. Love it. Love it. Get more information. Here we have the Eight of Swords. Um, you know, in a precarious situation, but nothing that that um, little rabbit can't handle. Um, just use her instincts, use her um, insights. I love the little paper things that are hanging here. Um, it's like they're up in the attic where little kids were playing. Um, but again, sweet. Here we have the Nine of Swords. I like this. Again, there is that sense of what in the heck here? Like does somebody sit here and somebody's throwing knives at it? So it has it where it could be a nightmare effect. But for me, it's about growth. All of the swords representing knowledge um, being about um, growth of knowledge. So I like there being a, an owl there, which also works in that. And then here we have our Ten of Swords. Again, nothing is dead here in the Ten of Swords, which I appreciate since I don't read it that way. And I love the books. Now, they are like sad books, right? So we have despair, we have sorrow, we have grief. So there is definitely the Rider Waite Smith sense of foreboding with the Ten of Swords. But I can just, you know, we've learned lessons from our grief and our sorrows and the sunlight and the positive things. And we are becoming more powerful and more knowledgeable, more learned because of it. So I can really roll with this. And I think RWS people can roll with it as well. Sweetest ever page of swords. I don't know if you can possibly get a sweeter, sweeter sweeter page of swords. Here's our, our knight of swords with our mouse uh, willing to step between the books into, again, I'm sorry, but there's a little magic in this place. We've got little potions and hanging things, and there's some magic there. Like, I do think if that little mouse stepped through there, um, he's going to enter into a liminal. So the deck just feels so liminal space. I love it. Here we have the Queen of Swords as a snake shedding her skin and becoming even more powerful. Yes, to the nth degree. Love it. And I love the King of Swords as a falcon, um, absolute, or a hawk or falcon. Absolutely stunning. No, no, no sadness there. Um, here we have the last of our aces. Again, all of the doors has a wand carved on it. I love the aces. There's so many cool places to go and each one has a different, um, you know, lessons to be learned in the different areas and the different elements. Absolutely love it. Two of Wands, planning out our course. Isn't it interesting that it is a, a map of the house? Ugh. Here we have the Three of Wands. Um, the three, again, is a number of growth. Um, now, it's often in Rider Waite Smith sort of awaiting, like it's what's going to come down, I guess, this badger's waiting. But for me, it's like, okay, now we're going to, we, we had our two, we're going to set our plans, but now he's going to actually set off and go, go find his path. So it works really great for me. Here we have the Four of Wands, a celebration of this adorable cake that no human would want to eat. But look, it's an old cake. Like somebody had a cake out that's now growing mushrooms. Like what has happened to these people? 
that's inquiring minds want to know what has happened to these people who live in this really awesome house this is what we want to know i love it um <laughs> absolutely love it okay we have our five of wands we have that discord that's going on there i don't particularly love that they're stuck in this Thing, but hopefully their their strife might actually end well in that it is going to uh, knock over this um, case, this um, case here um, and they'll actually gain some freedom from after they're done and can work together I'm sure they can get out of it but they better stop fighting amongst themselves here we have a cute little hedgehog um, in the six of wands uh, here we have the trophy of the um, achievement energy here. Um, then we have our seven of wands um, with our rabbit all kind of tangled up here. You know, generally you have where there's needing to get the higher ground so that you can sort of fight off the other ones here. Um, but this is more, for me, four sevens or four plus three. It's like find your foundation, sort of get your foot set, your feet underneath you, and then you're going to be able to um, move forward, on, depending on the suit, where you're going to move forward here with being able to manifest, um, which maybe the flowers can represent there as well. Here we have the Eight of Wands. Very interesting, right? Again, there's a lot to do with swiftness in the Eight of Wands in the Rider Waite Smith, which for me doesn't make as much sense, right? Because eights are about solidness and mastery. Um, but these fish are mastering escapism, you know, getting a skidding out of the situation. So I actually quite like that. There's our little mouse there as well, which was also, I think, in the Eight. I wonder if it's in the in all of the eights. I'll have to go back and check. But was definitely in the eight of cups, and now we have it here. Um, so we have this sense of um, movement that you see in the Rider Waite Smith. But we have they have mastered this plan to escape. I hope that there's water on the other side of that window. <laughs> that's 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 for sure. Um, here we have our nine of wands holding the line definitely a little injured like you often will see um, but still going to hold the line and keep keep uh, holding on there love the ten of wands here um, we have the fire in full swing um, this is a fullness of the suit of fire to have a fireplace that is um, roaring I think is perfect must have found some little matches to strike <laughs> um, and then here we have our sweet sweet page um, powerful knight uh, with a weasel and we do have the lizard that we often see in wands um, love the queen of wands with the ladybug as well and then our king of wands here um, in the painting of the wolf here. This is so sweet. Like it's sweet, but it's also, let me zoom out. Like I said, and I'm not gonna belabor any of this long because I know that this is well past my even long hour, but um, this is so sweet, but also, um, un you know, has that, that interesting liminal space of an, and these shuffle really. I love the cardstock of these decks. Um, I think I will uh, trim the edges, but I, you know, obviously have used their decks a lot, and I do really like the way their cardstock shuffles. I'm not a big fan of thicker cardstock, but their cardstock it just flexes really well. Um, and does great. So I love this. Um, I love the juxtaposition of what is the story behind this beautiful house. Um, why did everybody just disappear? Is it alien invasion? Is it that this house was right on the edge of a fey forest and it has slipped into the fey realm? Um, <laughs> is this post-apocalypse? And nature is taking back over the world? Like I think there's so much um, that story that could be behind there but what I like about the energy is that it does give a very liminal space 
um, energy, which I think is nothing but a bonus in a tarot deck uh, for me. So absolutely gorgeous. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll put the link below. Again, this is not available yet for um, pre-order, but it is coming up soon. Um, and if you want more information about that or to be notified, go to the website and sign up for their mailing list. Or if you follow them on Instagram, I'm sure you'll see it there. But absolutely stunning. Different than, this is what's so wonderful, right? Because again, I use these decks a lot. This is a, what I would say is a very straightforward, good worker um, tarot deck that ha has got this beautiful foresty animal uh, theme in it, um, but it it's very much working towards the energy of the tarot, right? Um, this is a dragon deck that again, works beautifully with the tarot um, and functions really well, but definitely brings in that power and majesty of the mythical um, or real hidden, depending on your, your flavor and your preference of dragon energy, but still has that tie into the forest. This is such a different energy because you do have this journey um, of this mouse all the way through. Um, and then you have this background story that you really see pieces of in the, the background and the titles of the books and the, the scenes where it feels like the, you know, the cake that was just left there and the um, Victrola that is waiting for somebody to, to turn it on and dance or the clothes that are hanging um, on the clothesline. So there's such a story behind it. There's a story of this mouse is adventure, but then there's this whole background story that is just really stunning that you don't see in either one of these decks. So it's definitely not like just another uh, animal forest deck. Um, it's got its own energy to it that I'm really excited because again, I use these, I don't really need just another rendition of, of the, um, Oak, Ash and Thorn. This works beautifully for what it is, but this feels very different and I absolutely love, um, love it. So obviously we will see how it goes as I read it. Uh, read with it, but i um, absolutely in love. I'm going to go corner around the ends. And again, remember that this is a prototype. And so the coloration will go more vibrant in the final one. The corner rounds edges will be rounded. And if there's anything in here, you know, that the, the, the artist and the creator decide they want need to tweak, there could be slight differences um, based off of that. So just want to make sure to remind you this is a prototype uh, walkthrough. So, okay, thank you for an excessive amount of time and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.